Well, hey, hey, everybody. So, welcome back to Clyde. My foraging tree is pretty bare. Um, I've been doing some rearranging and moved my birds outside and I had to take a lot of my stock of toys and move it out too, so I'm working on getting more toys out here. Anyways, if you guys can see Clyde, he is over here. I just got him back from Patty today. Uh, we kind of <laughs> went a little too fast with that, so everybody was really excited to have Clyde back. Um, he was super reluctant to come out of the cage that she brought him in, but we had to give that cage back to her, so we had to give a, get him out of it. And so, anyways, he didn't come out very willingly. He, like, started to come out two or three times and then would just bail and go back in. And by the time he finally came out, he was doing these crazy flights and landing on, like, the picture wall and stuff. So, anyways, Capri was like, can I take him in my room? And I was like, sure. So... Um, after his crazy flight, I think he looked nice, but he was actually just tired. And so I put him on her arm. She was wearing long sleeves, so I don't know if that's why he did it so nicely. But anyways, he went to Capri nicely. She went in her room, closed the door so that um, Patty could come in and out of the house with all the stuff that I sent her with. And then I heard her yell. <laughs> and he had apparently bit Capri in the face. Not enough for me to like show you guys any damage by any means, she wasn't bleeding, but she had a really rough morning anyway. She just had a tooth pulled yesterday. She hit her head on like the desk while trying to unplug a computer earlier that morning. Like she was just having a rough morning. And so to get bit by Clyde, who she was pretty excited to hang out with, um, it just really, it was a bummer this morning. It was kind of a, a cluster, to be honest. The good news is that Patty Foley Diet converted Clyde onto my cockatiel seed mix, which I'm really excited about, which um, Patty actually gave me the recipe for. It's her recipe. And so I'm really excited about that. And I want to share, like, the takeaways with that. I've personally never struggled getting a bird from one seed mix to a different seed mix. And so this was new for me having him struggle. And with the weight loss that he was experiencing, I just kind of panicked and went, went back to his old food, which is what a lot of people do. <laughs> So the interesting thing that Patty taught me about diet converting from seed mix to seed mix, so we were going from a store-bought crappy seed mix to um, our homemade seed mix, one of the things she realized by eating his old seed mix is that it had home like granola in it, like a cereal of granola. It was super duper sugary and it made the entire seed mix really sweet. So she said it was one of the worst seed mixes she'd ever seen and she was just like, there's no way I'm feeding this to him. One of the things she noticed when she put the seed mixes side by side is that his store-bought seed mix that he came to us from, um, or on I should say, was like 80 to 90% millet. Um, I knew that he liked millet and I knew he was picking it out, but I didn't for some reason have the logic to say that's because the seed mix is a majority of that. So anyways, Patty was smart enough to realize that the majority of his seed mix that he came on was a majority of millet. And so what she did was she messed with our ratio of our seed mix and she just put a bunch more millet and small seeds in there, um, like the chia and the flax seeds and stuff. And what happened was he was way more receptive to it. So she's like, I would rather have him on even, let's just call it a 100% millet diet. Let's just say he's on 100% millet, which I was convinced he was. Um, it would be better that he's on our 100% millet diet than their 100% millet diet that had so much sugar and all these other things in it and mixed in it into it and it was a low quality. I totally get her point. It makes sense now that she says it. Um, <laughs> but I definitely panicked. I panicked and I'm usually like kind of a master at diet conversion and this one got me. So I'm really excited to pass on this lesson to you guys and I hope that it helps a lot of you. So if you need to alter what you're doing or what you're used to working and um, modify it a little bit to make it work better, do it. Um, it's definitely a quality thing. 
in this case. And so now he's 100% on our cocktail seed mix, which I'm really excited about. So now the next steps are for me to introduce our pellets, which I'm just gonna offer 24 seven and start offering fresh foods. I think I'm going to struggle harder with the fresh foods, just seeing his reaction to fresh food. Anytime it touched anything, he completely avoided it. So I'm, I'm playing with the idea of maybe just tackling one thing at a time to avoid getting overwhelmed and just tackling introducing pellets. And I'm gonna do that by adding the powder of my pellets to the seed mix and see if that starts to get him interested. And then I'll also have a bowl of pellets available 24 seven for him. So that's kind of my pellet conversion plan. We'll see how far we get. And then of course, keeping up on the training, Patty did tell me after we had our fiasco this morning that he's had a rough 36 hours just based on the fact that um, she had a bunch of different jobs come in. She had to move all of her birds, including him. It was just a lot of chaos for a bit of time. Um, and yeah, so I think that's why we were also not set up for success on that stuff this morning, which I didn't videotape any of it because we, we had just gotten back. She had just got there. It was just a lot. So yeah, but it was pretty terrible. <laughs> um, so hopefully you guys are learning a lot from this series with Clyde because nothing has gone smoothly or perfect in any of it. And I think that's most likely more realistic for everybody involved. So hopefully you guys are, are definitely learning from it. He doesn't seem to mind that this, um, this tree is a little less toy covered than usual, but he is by the one spot there are some toys. So Anyways, I am um, going to take the weekend and we had a bunch of shelves collapse in our garage. We have just, you know what, it doesn't even matter. We just have a lot of stuff that we need to get to and it needs to be gotten to now. So I'm going to chalk up today as a, here's your stuff, you can just chill. I'm gonna get out of this scenario so I don't make it worse. And we're gonna have a fresh clean slate tomorrow <laughs> to work from. So yeah, and in the meantime, I will share my cockatiel seed mix recipe with you guys. Okay, so today is a new day with Clyde. Um, I haven't weighed him yet today. I've started really giving him his mornings to himself. He just seems to do better that way. <laughs> doesn't get super angry. Just kind of found he's not much of a morning bird and that could change. So I'm gonna see if he wants to step up for me. This is the first time asking for it since he's been back from Patty. Um, he's not in an ideal position, being so high up and awkward for me. But I don't have a step stool. You wanna come? Oh. Hey, look, look. Look, you just don't care? He's lunging at me, so I don't think I'm going to get a nice step up, especially because I don't have any long sleeves, which is a bummer. Okay. Can you come? Do you even want this? Okay, so that's a huge part of the problem. I think, uh, so he has been free feeding because he is on diet conversion, so <laughs> he has food accessible all the time. The fact that he really likes millet, um, that's a majority of the seed mix now that Patty switched him to. Uh, so I think I'm going to have a hard time motivating him with millet because he's already getting millet for free for not doing anything, not having to interact. So I might have to structure his meal times, but you sure? You're sure. So I can get a, a very obvious no from about this far away. Oop, this far? This far away. This far away? Um, so I don't want to get bit. I don't want to like force him to step up because I feel like if I do that, one, I'm going to get bit multiple times and two, he's likely to just like end up flying off and, and being bad. So I'm going to go with the fact that even though I can't weigh him, um, and that is important, it's just one single day of not weighing him and I will be able to set up better for either later today or tomorrow of just delivering his food from me or somehow associating me positively to be able to weigh him tomorrow. Um, but he's very, very consistent, <clears throat> has the exact same weight every single day with Patty, had the exact same weight with Dave every single day. So I'm not worried about a single day of not being able to weigh him. Um, 
And yeah, I'm just going to chalk it up. You know, this is the first project word I've had where I have allowed quite a bit of time of just like letting him hang out and get a little bit more comfortable. Um, seems to really work against me if he's crazy uncomfortable, which is interesting because with most birds, there's that slight discomfort actually works in your favor. Oh, hey there. Life, life, you guys. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to let him hang out. I would really like to move him onto my back patio porch and have him outside in the fresh air and stuff. I don't think that's in the cards for today, and I have some cleaning up to do back there, but I would love to move him back there and just have him getting fresh air, bathing. He seems to really like bathing, so if I can bathe him more and associate myself positively that way, that'd be really cool. Just kind of looking for all the routes that I can make him happy with my presence. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, we'll see how far we get over the next few days. Hey, bud. Do you want to come outside? Found a little bit of a way to get him to step up nicely. Like this. I'm going to put you on this one. Oops, sorry. Sorry, guys. Handling bird. What do you think? Ooh, it feels nice out here. Might need to give you a bath out here. Looks a little messy out here. We have a bunch of stuff waiting to go in this shed that we have being built behind the studio because the studio is where our storage shed used to be. And now we have no storage. <laughs> so actually you can kind of see it over there. Right there. Um, but anyways, when that is done, all the stuff will be moved out of here. But for now, it's still spacious. Um, you still got lots of room. What do you think? Does it feel good out here? Yeah, it's gotta feel nice.
chapman.